talked in here about respect and a lot and monitoring the comment threads, et cetera, and, you know, and, the, and the, making that decision to hide or delete or ban. Do any of you have stories that you could share about times when you've engaged with somebody who made a denigrating comment and then actually had a, 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 a helpful exchange, if you will? And then how do you decide to hide or not engage? People can have conversations. People can see a new perspective. People can change their minds even. Um, this whole word respect that we're using, I, I get a lot of pushback on that because what I'm saying is I respect another person's humanity. Yes. I respect another person's right to have different opinions from me. I don't always respect their comments or what they say or how they say it, or maybe some of the things they believe. Um, but like I said earlier, if they're making their argument with um, appropriate tone and appropriate vocabulary, they're not insulting, they're not denigrating, they're not bullying, then we have agreed to provide this space so that they can have that conversation. I can't think of any specific examples right now and I wish I'd prepared one, but I've, had, I've also had several times where someone said something and it came across wrong and it wasn't even what they mean. You know, like, and everybody will jump on somebody because they think this person's a troll because everybody's so, everyone's like really reactive because of the incivility and trolling that takes place online. And sometimes like I have to read something twice because somebody's not necessarily saying what people think they're saying. And if you take it into context, you're like, oh wait, that was different. <laughs> uh, I do have an example actually. And unfortunately it wasn't on Facebook. Um, it was on Twitter. However, um, I think, what did I, I made a statement um, no, someone had made a statement about asking about someone else's like sexual preference that they didn't necessarily understand. Um, and so because I understood where it come with that, you know, that those preferences come from in the history of it, I kind of explained it and I explained the differences and the person's comment to me was, oh, so not normal which the word normal was nowhere in the statement that I made. And so even though it wasn't blatant disrespect, I wasn't being called out of my name. I wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. being, um, I wasn't being integrated in any blatant type of way, trying to change my words to then make someone else's condition, not the norm or to, to make someone mm -hmm. else's preferences seem derogatory. That's a form of disrespect. And yeah. so while it's not vulgar, right? So it may not be something that we'd want to take away. It's a perfect example of publicly telling someone, this was disrespectful what you did in response to me trying to educate you. And it's a, a good way to kind of set the standard for what engagement and a response to disrespect can be without creating, um, without creating conflict. You know, I, I think one of the things when um, when I had more time to do more of the comment moderation uh, for Coffee Party, um, seeing some of those comments that were that were initially disrespectful and asking a couple of questions would really change the tone. Um, That's one way to help people hear feel heard. We we all want to know that somebody's just listened and heard us honestly, and asking clarifying questions is a really simple way to do that. You know, when you do take somebody aside, you need to, uh, you're, you're going to find out real quick that if this person's just having a bad day or is new to our site or that kind of thing versus somebody who is just there to harass and bully and threaten people, usually you're going to find that out pretty quick when you engage with them personally.